Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Intel got a lot of coverage with all their announcements in the past couple weeks, so today let's take a closer look at what Nvidia and AMD have been up to. Nvidia did a digital GTC where they showed off the technology that will create our future robot overlords, and AMD announced the Ryzen 5000G APUs and had a flurry of leaks and rumors about their next gen processors. I fed the training programs all of the raw data, so let's see what the secret ingredient is in this week's tech news. Love? All right, who's been screwing with this thing? Excellent! Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. NVIDIA's annual GPU technology conference was a remote event again this year, with CEO Jensen Huang reporting from his kitchen on the progress his company has made over the past year. There are a few reasons why one might tune in to a GTC keynote. The memes, of course, Jensen's leather jacket was joined last year by his spatula collection, which I'm happy to report is still going strong. And as of Monday, we can now also riff on his aging rock star hairstyle. Those long silver locks either show that he's let himself go during quarantine like some degenerate hippie, or that he is morphing into a kind of tech CEO wizard, a GPU Gandalf who we can definitely trust to control and develop the most powerful AI hardware the world has ever seen. Personally, I think he deserves credit for sticking with the gray rather than dyeing it like he could, but I've spent way too much time on Jensen's hair now. The second reason that you might tune in is a big gaming GPU announcement. Uh, there wasn't one. The third reason is if you're interested in all the other stuff NVIDIA does, the self-driving car and AI stuff, or the use cases where their crazy expensive $150,000 DGX 320G systems can be deployed, like electrical grids, advanced drug research, and quantum computing. A big announcement was the Grace CPU, which is designed in collaboration with ARM, a company that NVIDIA is attempting to acquire right now if they can get past the regulatory hurdles. It's made for massive scale AI and high performance compute tasks and joins several other pieces of hardware like the Bluefield 3 data center infrastructure processor and the updated Ampere-based A100 GPU for AI acceleration, now with 80 gigabytes of HBM2E, double the amount of the stupid A100 that they launched last year. Now there are a lot more GTC details and interesting tidbits in the keynote and the break out videos from NVIDIA, so I'll link those down below. Watch them, and then maybe come back to this video and help the rest of us figure out what Jensen's long game plan is. Will the future be dominated by those with the most graphics cards and AI processing power? Will Jensen rule the NVIDIA Omniverse as a benevolent king or a ruthless tyrant? Do DGX-powered replicants already wander among us, learning to exploit our weaknesses with calculated social cues and subtle flattery? My audience would obviously be too smart to fall for something like that, but perhaps the greatest question is, Look at how they digitally disassembled Jensen's entire kitchen in this clip, as if GTC was entirely a simulation created by the very AI tools that it was made to promote. And if that was just a simulation, is this a simulation too? I was trying to look more closely to figure it all out, and then I realized that it doesn't look like anything to me. Okay, let's talk about other NVIDIA stuff that doesn't cause an existential crisis, like consumer gaming GPUs, that thing that deep down you knew they weren't even going to bring up at GTC. Well, actually they did, but the news isn't good. At their investor day on Monday, NVIDIA's chief financial officer Colette Kress said, overall demand remains very strong and continues to exceed supply while our channel inventories remain quite lean. We expect demand to continue to exceed supply for much of this year. So don't expect shelves full of RTX 3080s anytime soon, probably not till 2022. Not that Nvidia mines too much, since they also said that they're going to outperform their $5.3 billion initial Q1 revenue estimates. So they made more than 5.3 billion in Q1 2021, which was already a huge jump over last year's $3.08 billion Q1 revenue number. They're also going to make 150 million from crypto mining cards for the quarter instead of the 50 million originally planned, all while still claiming that the CMP cards aren't cutting into the availability of gaming GPUs. But since this is all just a simulation, I guess nothing really matters, so 
Hey, that's nice. Speaking of simulated happiness, a few outlets reported last week that the GTX 1080 Ti would be relaunched in another attempt to meet the current insatiable customer demand for gaming GPUs. The 1080 Ti is still a pretty nice GPU with an 11 gig frame buffer, but alas, Gamers Nexus did that thing where you ask manufacturers to confirm something before publishing an article about it, and EVGA basically laughed and said no. So you'll have to go back to the used market for a 1080 Ti where they're currently selling for Oh gosh, about $700, which incidentally is the same price it launched at four years ago in March, 2017. AMD also gave gaming GPU-less PC enthusiasts a brief glimmer of hope this week as they announced the Ryzen 5000G lineup of CPUs, or APUs if you want to use AMD's now abandoned verbiage for a CPU with an integrated GPU. There are four core, six core, and eight core chips with either a 65 watt or 35 watt TDP. And while the Vega 8 integrated graphics aren't the best, they do provide functional video out support for light gaming or other tasks and are an improvement over the Vega 11 iGPUs from the existing Ryzen 3200G and 3400G APUs thanks to higher clock speeds. And you're getting actual 7 nanometer Zen 3 CPU architecture under the hood, albeit without PCIe 4.0 support and with half the L3 cache of chips like the 5600X. The true rub is that they're OEM only parts for now, so you'll have to buy a full system from an integrator to get your hands on one, although AMD is promising retail Retail availability sometime this year. Speaking of AMD APUs, wouldn't it be cool if there was one with actual Navi 2 based integrated graphics like what the RX 6900 XT uses? Well, that does appear to be in the works if this image is accurate. What is this image? It's not leaked from AMD, but rather a fan made image put together by Orac29 on Twitter. The info is sourced from leaks though, so while we must take our prescribed grain of salt while viewing, it's a nice quick look at AMD's roadmap of upcoming products by family, with the top line being desktop CPUs, we're currently on Vermeer with the Ryzen 5000 X series processors. The second line here is APUs though, with Cezanne being the just announced 5000G desktop lineup, and the third the third line is mobile CPUs, where we're currently on Lucien. The fourth line is rumored low power APU variants based on 7 nanometers Zen 2, but with RDNA 2 based graphics. And the fifth line is the high end desktop Threadripper lineup, with Chogall being the penultimate rating counter from the Bastion of Twilight. I'm sorry, that's the Threadripper 5000 series as discussed in last week's tech news. Point being, there's interesting stuff here, again, if true. Zen 3 Plus Warhol being 6 nanometer, but also still on the AM4 socket with DDR4. Zen 4 Raphael being 5 nanometer, but on the socket AM5 with DDR5 memory. And RDNA 2, that's green instead of red, as it is elsewhere for unknown reasons. I'm sure all of this will be confirmed or debunked in the future, but for now, it's interesting to look at. Let's move on. And now for tech briefs. Short news done quickly. Now available in a slower, longer format by switching the YouTube playback speed to 0.5. I couldn't entirely avoid Intel news today, especially when at 9550 Pro on Twitter posts such a legit looking roadmap picture that seems to be from a partner meeting. Alder Lake S, the Xeon workstation variant of Intel's upcoming LGA 1700 based CPUs is shown launching in late Q3 2021. That's actually pretty soon, and it would mean that Rocket Lake based Xeons are going to have a very short lifespan indeed, but the slide also shows Rocket Lake launching in 2020 still, when it actually launched last month in March 2021, so it could be an outdated photo. Consumer chips also typically launch before Xeons, so we'll still have to wait and see what 10 nanometer products Intel can actually launch for desktop this year. Twitch has banned 7.5 million accounts for viewbotting, causing some popular streamers to lose 2 to 3 million followers in a day. Granted, those bots weren't really people, and Twitch says the bans were directed at the bots, not the streamers who happened to have a lot of bot followers. XQC, for example, lost 2.6 million followers, bringing him down to 5.5 million. That's almost 40% of his followers. That's a lot of bots. And now let's round things out with stories that I'm gonna take credit for. Intel has posted the official desktop driver for Rocket Lake integrated graphics. The UHD 730 and UHD 750 iGPUs have downloads available as of Friday, a bit of important software that was notably missing when the 11th gen core chips launched last month. Intel didn't really seem to think this was a big deal until people started pointing it out myself included. So glad I could help you out 11th gen core iGPU users. This one's on me. 
Now back when AMD launched their X570 chipset, I was one of the ones complaining about how chipset cooling fans often suck, especially after a year or two of use. Then last week, new Gigabyte product listings showed X570S as the chipset, prompting many to speculate that a refresh was in the works. But while there is a new X570 chip, it's not made for Ryzen 6000 series support, but rather for the upgrade of not needing a chipset fan anymore. Gamers Nexus has confirmed that there is a different piece of silicon for passive ready X570 chipsets, and while X570S is probably just Gigabyte's name for it, we can look forward to fanless X570 chipsets in the future, which I will take credit for because I complained about it. Finally, I deserve glorious accolades for fixing AMD's Ryzen USB problems with the Ajisa 1.2.0.2 update that MSI has started to roll out for its 500 series motherboards. Other vendors will no doubt be posting BIOS updates for their boards too, including 400 series boards like the B450, but MSI gets credit for being first on this one, and I get credit too since I talked about it and probably had a tremendous influence on the whole process. So you're welcome, everyone. And with that, tech news for the week is finished. At least, all the important stuff. Even though this was all just procedurally generated by some advanced AI meta being whose power we cannot even begin to comprehend, I had fun, and I hope you did too. If you'd like to leave me a strongly worded message, your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to drop a comment down below while you're dropping things down there. All the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. And you can also click the like button if you enjoyed the video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options and beer drinking pair Fernalia, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, fellow humans, and we'll see you in the next video.